Welcome to Celeste, a mountain that you have been climbing on for your entire life. And as I sit here, speaking into a phone in my closet, you are still climbing. And guess what? So am I. Celeste uncovers the weak parts in all of us, and what we need to do in order to counter those weak parts. They are the inner demons telling you that you aren't good enough for this world, or you can never succeed, or maybe it's something completely unrelated. The important thing is to learn to ignore them. Don't listen to them. Keep climbing and eventually you will find a true way to fight the demons that made a home in your mind. Celeste accurately mirrors the mental struggles that people go through in society, mostly students. Stress is as prominent as ever due to the constant and rapid progressions of today's world. Whether it be technological advancements, stresses about college admissions, or just plain old workload. Although this is an incredibly widespread issue, stress is important. However, it stops becoming important once a certain boundary is crossed. Celeste emphasizes the significance of the ability to cope with stress and anxiety by seeing them as essential for the progression throughout our lives. In addition, it also highlights why it's so crucial to understand your limits. Otherwise, you could be a victim of depression or other severe mental disorders that will block you from attaining your goal. Most high school students, specifically juniors and seniors, believe that school is the only thing that matters, partly due to external pressures. This belief is completely untrue, and this documentary is here to prove why excessive stress and anxiety can lead to depression, and again, why it is so important to know your limits. Let's begin by talking about what Celeste is in the first place. Celeste is a platform that tests your will, ability to solve puzzles, and how well you are able to time your movements. As the chapters progress, the levels become increasingly more difficult by introducing a variety of different mechanics as well as more complicated maneuvers. Madeline, the main character, believes that her life up to where the game begins has been unfulfilling, so she decides that she wants to climb a mountain in order to find some sort of meaning. Immediately, the opening text makes it clear that Madeline suffers from anxiety and low self-esteem, which is subtly expanded upon just a moment later in her interactions with Granny, an old woman who lives at the bottom of Celeste. Granny mentions, Celeste Mountain is full of strange things, things you ain't ready to see, which only reinforces that the mountain is dangerous both on a physical and mental level. As Madeline begins her climb, the ground crumbles behind her, signifying that there is no way back. The player learns the first few mechanics, including jumping, dashing, and climbing, and the journey up Celeste Mountain officially begins. But first, let's ask the question, how can the different components and types of mental disorders be a metaphor for the chapters and the milestones on Celeste Mountain? Chapter 1, The Forsaken City Mental Disorders, What They Are and Why They Are So Dangerous The climb really begins in a place called the Forsaken City, which is essentially just an abandoned city that once existed on Celeste Mountain. There really isn't anything too special about this chapter, other than the fact that the music is probably the best in the game and the level itself isn't too difficult, giving the player a determined mindset which in turn encourages them to continue playing. At the end of the chapter, Madeline arrives at a large tombstone which highlights the names of the people who died trying to climb the mountain. However, that does not deter her, and rather than freaking out, she sets up camp for the night. Although there isn't anything incredibly crucial, What's important is that we now know how well Madeline is able to mask the issues that she is struggling with. There isn't any hint of anxiety or panic anywhere to be seen. Rather, like the player, her tenacity remains rigid. This is why mental disorders are so dangerous. Your friend or someone close to you can act completely normal. However, you really don't know what is happening inside their minds. This is because of the heavy stigma behind mental disorders. People with heavy disorders are suddenly looked down upon and are seen as broken and hopeless. They react this way because they aren't really experienced at responding to something like that, due to the inability to contextualize or understand it. As Clyde Hedgecock Jr. mentions in his article, hiding behind a secret the stigma of the mentally ill, surely with this perception of mental illness being negative, especially in comparison to other illnesses, there are many who are not possibly allowed or able to seek employment or have a social life due to their illness. And it's true. 
The reason that seeking employment or performing well in school may be so difficult is because of this stigma, and as a result, the person masks their emotions. In addition, a study from NYU states that there's a stigma against being taken to professional doctors, such as therapists and or psychologists, because parents believe it would impact the future of their children when it comes to college acceptance. The bottling up of these emotions becomes so massive that the person may self-destruct, which should not be mistaken for an effective coping mechanism. Bottled up emotions turn into secrets that can be so damaging they can lead to family issues, depression, and suicide. Communication is crucial in that it causes that mask to peel off, leading to a healthier state of mind. Secrets help no one and only create tension, confusion, and chaos in a person's life. They not only promote stress, but take individual stressors and make them out to be more severe than they actually are. In Madeline's case, the player just doesn't have enough information yet and can only assume that there are some dangerous secrets that have yet to be uncovered. Chapter 2, The Old Sight, all about anxiety dreams. After Madeline sets up camp for the night, she finds herself awake in a sort of dreamy state, with the background all green and the music very, well, dreamy. You climb a little and explore, and then you encounter a mirror where you see yourself, yet it's also someone different. That someone pops out of the mirror and runs away, and you are left confused and wondering who in the world that could be. As you catch up to that reflection, you realize that it is Madeline, however, she seems darker. Introducing Madeline, the other part of ourselves that feeds off of our anxiety and stress. The more you stress, the stronger the Madeline inside of you gets. When Madeline first encounters Madeline, she says things like, You are many things, darling, but not a mountain climber, and you can't handle this. Then she becomes completely unreasonable, and a chase scene engages. She finds herself at a telephone booth, where her mother calls her and asks her why she is calling so late, and says, you only call me when you're panicking in the middle of the night. Right then and there, it is clear that Madeline suffers from stress and anxiety. Immediately after the call, Madeline takes the shape of the disgusting monster that eats Madeline and the phone booth. She wakes up in a cold sweat and continues her journey. Stress can lead to attacks such as these, causing you to wake up in a cold sweat or just confused. Stress generally causes you to lose sleep, specifically REM, which in turn means that your dreams when you do sleep are much more intense and seem more realistic. And although there's limited research about controlling the content of our dreams, anxiety dreams can generally be a result of increased stress from our day-to-day -day lives. Daily stress can also increase the frequency of these dreams. The important thing to note is that the presence of these dreams clearly depicts some sort of imbalance in a person's life. Once it is clear that they exist, there is no doubt that the stress an individual is going through is serious and should be dealt with professionally. Isidore Alman in Psychology Today gives examples of dreams and what they could possibly say about what is happening in a person's life. For example, if your typical anxiety dream is the naked and public one, it is usually a reflection of feeling somehow exposed or ashamed in your real life. The unprepared stage actor scenario, or the exam for which you're late and haven't studied often, reflect a feeling of not being prepared for some actual real-life event. Madeline seems to suffer from something similar to the unprepared stage actor example. This part of her that terrorizes her dreams constantly tells her that she cannot climb the mountain, that she is not ready at all and should give up. Madeline truly wasn't prepared to climb the mountain and didn't realize what powers the mountain had in the first place, but at the same time, she was. Let's look back. Madeline simply wanted to climb in the hopes of achieving something. This could be it. Although she doesn't clearly accept and identify that she has an anxiety issue in Chapter 2, the fact that she has the dream in the first place depicts that this was her goal. Her ultimate goal 
was to have the dream so she could be entirely sure and in the end decide to continue to climb in order to get to the root of the problem. She continues climbing because she wants to keep fighting. Free floating anxiety somehow feels worse, less handleable than when you have it attached to a situation you can assure yourself you can handle. Chapter 3 The Celestial Resort Loneliness and Isolation Before we head to Chapter 3, let's introduce another character that will be quite important when it comes to the development of Madeline. After waking up from her dream, Madeline encounters Theo, an aspiring photographer who climbs Celeste in order to take pictures that will boost his flowers on Instapix and acts as support and companion to Madeline on her journey. Theo is one of the ways in which calms Madeline's anxiety. Know that there is another human being near driving towards essentially the same goal is indeed calming. Theo talks about some of his stories and what really compelled him to climb the mountain, which was actually his grandfather. After Madeline leaves, Theo stays behind, however in a way, his presence remains, which is always comforting. Madeline finds herself in front of a hotel called the Celestial Resort, which looks relatively old and almost abandoned. Little does she know that now she will be stumbling upon another interesting relationship, however this one is quite depressing. At the main counter, Mr. Oshiro, the owner of the Celestial Resort, welcomes Madeline and asks whether or not she would like to stay. However, something seems off. He is in reality a ghost. Or maybe that's what he seems like to Madeline. See, Mr. Oshiro has forgotten what it has felt like to receive visitors, and in this way, he himself has become forgotten. His entire hotel is in complete disarray and he constantly talks to himself as if he's worried about making the guest stay unsatisfactory. By acting this way, he is actually repulsing the guest, which makes the player and Madeline think that he is rather eccentric. While Madeline is in the hotel, Ashura constantly asks her about her well-being and how she is feeling, but Madeline is only focused on making it out of the hotel so that she could continue her journey. Although she soon becomes worried for Ashura, because she realizes that he seems to struggle from some sort of a variation of bipolar disorder. She feels bad for him even though Theo, who briefly and accidentally falls out of the vents, warns her that Oshiro is dangerous. The music gets more complex as the chapter progresses, and gets more mysterious and cryptic almost. At some point, Madeline helps clean up in the hotel, however, Oshiro doesn't exactly seem thankful, contributing to the strong personality discrepancy that exists when people live in isolation for too long. At another point, we see that Oshiro keeps beating himself up over how he is acting, and the dirty and fuzzy dust particles that you see all over escape from his head and obstruct Madeline from continuing her journey, forcing her to take a detour. This demonstrates that prolonged isolation is what leads people to give on something they love just because they feel like there's nothing worth living for, or it just could lead to extreme negative moods. Just when you thought Ashiro couldn't get worse, Badalyn shows up and attacks with the most degrading insults. Yes, Badalyn is now real. Eventually the mental stress becomes too much and he turns into a monster that eventually chases Madeline out of the hotel. During the COVID-19 pandemic, I believe that this theme of isolation and loneliness is especially relevant. If anything, COVID has shown us what it feels like to be alone, and the side effects aren't necessarily all that great. Although I doubt that anyone is going to end up like Mr. Ashira during this time, the pandemic has caused a great toll on many people's well-being. Considering the effects of past quarantines, we can say that there are some consequences that are quite common. Among them we can find insomnia, low mood, stress, irritability, and confusion. Being exposed to long-term isolation like Ashira can greatly inflate the severity of those symptoms. A real-life example of long-term isolation is seen with professional US poker player Richard Aladi, who bet $100,000 that he could stay in a dark room for 30 days straight. Unfortunately, he could not handle it anymore and asked to be released around day 20. Humans are social creatures who do not thrive in isolation whatsoever and will tend to hallucinate and have extreme changes in their sleep cycle if kept alone for long periods of time. The article that talks about Aladi's experience mentions that socially isolated people are less able to deal with stressful situations. In addition, they're also more likely to feel depressed 
and may have problems processing information. This in turn can lead to difficulties with decision making and memory storage and recall. There is also being more susceptible to illness, anxiety and panic attacks, increased levels of paranoia, being less able to think clearly, increased cancer, risk, insulin resistance, and aging, obesity, and heart disease, as well as other physical problems. All of this leads to personality changes like what happened to Ashiro. As an added bonus, I'd like to talk about a personal and somewhat widespread theory about what really happened to Oshiro and what his fate could really be. Right before the hotel closed, Oshiro was going to go climbing with his staff. Unable to let go of his hotel, he may have committed suicide so that he could be with it forever. The sacrifice that he made was being alone, and as a result he creates those dust particles representing the rapid rate of deterioration of his mental health. The dust will eventually crowd his hotel to the point where it becomes completely foreign. Now his fate. In Mexican culture there is a holiday called the Day of the Dead that celebrates the dead through feast and music, among other things. What's important is that it mentions the three deaths. First and foremost is the actual death, where our heart ceases function and our body shut down. Second, our bodies are buried and our spirits are transported to the land of the dead. Third, and the most definitive death, is when there is no one left alive to remember us. If Theo and Madeline hadn't come along, Ashira would be one step closer to stage three, one step closer to becoming completely and utterly forgotten. In the end, Oshira watches Madeline as she runs away and continues her journey. Chapter 4, The Golden Ridge, Anxiety and Stress, The Root of All Mental Disorders After Madeline escapes from Ashiro, she is once again greeted by Granny, who has somehow caught up to her. She laughs after hearing about Madeline's terrifying experience with Ashiro, which doesn't exactly make her feel any better. She mentions that Ashiro is a lost soul who unfortunately cannot be saved, other than making sure that he is not entirely forgotten. Granny warns Madeline about the wind and the dangers of the cliffs, and straight up says, the mountain can bring out anything that isn't already in you. And it really is as simple as that. Throughout this level, the music is very calming and relaxing. There are a whole bunch of new mechanics and tools that are available for use. Control blocks that the player guides using a joystick. Clouds, which boost your jump a little more. And bubbles, which, well, I'll show you. Wind is also something new, which makes the level much more challenging. It drifts the way you run, jump, and dash, which means that you need to control and time your moves much more effectively. This is a metaphor for these next two chapters. They will undoubtedly be the most difficult, and they will mirror the feelings of intense anxiety and stress. More importantly in the context of high school and the workload that is given. Once Madeline reaches the end of the Golden Ridge, she encounters Theo, from this point on, the only way up is a ski lift that is barely functioning. However, there is no choice. She needs to keep climbing. As they ride up, they talk. However, they are quickly interrupted by a loud noise and a malfunction that stops the ski lift. Madeline appears above the lift and out of sight. Madeline freaks out and starts to panic until she gets out of control and her breathing and heart rate shoot up. Theo tells Madeline to relax because in reality it isn't that big of a deal. The thing that Madeline is most afraid of is failing, again. The stress of that failure piles up and in that moment she has a nervous breakdown. And again, it is Madeline that is there to ruin the day and make Madeline's climb much more difficult than it should be. In high school and college, anxiety and stress are more present than ever. With the amount of homework that teachers give, pressure about college, SATs, clubs, etc., it's no surprise that students suffer so much. Then, the battle and inside of each student comes alive and tells them that they can't do it and that they should give up. This causes poor grades, substance abuse, and just an overall awful state of mind. Generalized anxiety disorder is characterized by persistent and excessive worry about a number of different things. Anxiety among teens has risen significantly over the past couple of years. In 2017, the American College Health Association's National College Health Assessment 2 
That was a handful, found that nearly 61% of college students felt overwhelming anxiety, a sharp increase from 50% in 2011. In addition, the inclusion of technology in the widespread use of smartphones has led to decreased self-esteem, life satisfaction, and overall happiness. For many students who want to complete their climb like Madeline, there are all these obstacles constantly getting in the way that slow them down. Eventually though, you can make it if you keep your head high and handle it the right way. Theo, a companion that everyone needs on their journey, helps her breathing return to normal and the ski lift miraculously starts up again. They make it out with a huge sigh of relief and head to the mirror temple, the home of all the most frightening monsters imaginable. This is where anxiety and stress are born. Chapter 5, The Mirror Temple, Effects of Anxiety and Negative Coping At first sight, the mirror temple doesn't seem all that bad. There are two new tools for Madeline to use, dash blocks that move whenever Madeline dashes, and red bubbles which only stop if there is something in Madeline's way or if she dashes out of them. After a couple of rooms, Madeline finds Theo, who seems to be inside of a mirror. He says that he was knocked unconscious for a few seconds and found himself inside a deep and dark place. In Celeste, mirrors are the birth of nightmares. Madeline's dream started with a mirror, and now she finds herself in the Mirror Temple, a place where anxiety is manifested. The Mirror Temple itself is quite complex, just like the lives of many high school and college students. It stresses the player out, which accurately reflects how students feel in this day and age. Eventually, she finds a huge mirror and is then subsequently sucked into it. She is transported to an extremely creepy version of the Mirror Temple, where tentacles appear out of every crevice and the music is very cryptic. A creature appears and takes the shape of this one-eyed squid, who isn't exactly the friendliest one-eyed squid out there. It seems these creatures have infested this whole area, making survival more difficult. It also seems as though Madeline's fear and anxiety was so great that this alternate reality ended up being created because of this. When she finds Theo, she even says that she's sorry he had to see the side of her. Unfortunately, he can't really think about that because he's trapped inside a crystal and Madeline is the only person that can save him. What's interesting here is that you, the player, actually use the crystal to solve puzzles. And it is also imperative that you make sure Theo doesn't die, or else you die. In addition, if you play the music in the mirror temple backwards, you hear about Madeline's depression and her struggle with low self-esteem. All the eyes that stare at Madeline throughout the reflected version of the mirror temple or a depiction of how insecure she really feels about herself. Sometimes I don't really know what's going on anymore. I, and I don't know who I am. I just... The reflected version of the mirror temple is created by all students. It is where their anxiety, dreams, nightmares, monsters, and anything related to stress resides. You don't want to bring that side of them out, but it occurs because of all the things happening in the student's life. All the pressure from their parents and the workload creates a negative atmosphere where the student suffers chronic amounts of stress even before reaching adulthood. To demonstrate the effects of stress, NYU did a quantitative and qualitative study on two schools and the 11th graders in those schools, since juniors tend to suffer the most from excessive stress. We sought to describe the experiences of the students, but also uncover the larger cultural and societal factors that drive the problem of chronic stress, since schools, families, and youth don't operate in a vacuum, says Amanda Ritchie, MAA, a study collaborator. 49% of students say that they felt a great deal of stress on a day-to-day -day basis. The stress that they suffer from is largely due to influence from parents, and a push to take more difficult courses like APs that may not necessarily suit their desires. 
Now, how did the students cope with all this pressure? Well, the majority of the coping was emotional exhaustion and substance abuse, both awful adapting strategies. Emotional exhaustion, like one student puts it, is you get tired. You don't really want to be around people. You just get in this kind of funk where like you just kind of want to be in your room and just sleep or just like not deal with anything. And then loneliness. As we've talked about previously, being lonely has extremely negative side effects. So when it comes to stress in school, the student is forced to withdraw as a coping strategy, which in turn leads to more negative side effects. Another notable strategy is substance abuse. One student notes, most of the things that people do here when they're stressed is they get drunk or high. And although this is only a temporary coping method, it can lead to some long-term mental issues and can lead to addiction in the future. This is because the student knows that drugs and alcohol have worked before, so there's no reason not to do it again. When the level ends, Madeline and Theo set up camp for the night, and Madeline talks about all the stress and her life and how it led to panic attacks and depression. She coped by drinking and spending unhealthy amounts of time on the internet. However, talking to Theo gives her an epiphany, and she finally realizes what she needs to do. Chapter 6, The Reflection, How to Cope with Stress and Face Your Fears In her dream, Madeline encounters Madeline again, but this time she isn't afraid to say what she thinks needs to happen. She finally confronts her manifestation head on, realizing that rather than being her true reflection, Madeline is simply a representation of all the troubles that she needs to let go of in order to truly find balance in her life. However, this is completely the opposite of what she needs to do and Badalyn takes what she said in the worst way possible. She becomes overly aggressive and takes out her hundreds of tentacles, trapping her, making her panic once again. She uses Theo's coping strategy of breathing using the golden feather. However, Badalyn slices the feather in half and throws her down into the mountain. Her dream comes to life and she finds herself falling deeper and deeper, until finally she lands in a body of water. She gets out and runs around until finding a new mechanic, the angry box. When dashing into them they become angered and moved at high speeds in the opposite direction of your dash. In addition there are feathers. Upon collecting a feather, Madeline turns into a golden orb that you must control. The interesting part is that it is very sensitive to any movements you make so you must be in complete control. This is a metaphor for anxiety, by the way. Madeline once again runs into Granny, who notices how far down she is, and asks whether or not she gave up. She responds by saying that she has, but Granny can sense that she isn't the type to do that. She pushes her to talk to Madeline and work something out, something that they are both satisfied with. She believes that Madeline is afraid, and that the first step of healing is actually confronting the problem which Madeline didn't do too effectively. Rather than telling her problem to go away, she should have made it her friend. As she continues, the many tentacles that are seen retract every time Madeline heads forward, until she sees Madeline sitting there. It seems as though Madeline has lost all trust in Madeline and is unwilling to cooperate, which is to be expected. When she comes closer, Madeline transforms into her true form and she shoots orbs and lasers at Madeline. As the player, you keep going because giving up isn't an option at this point. Doing so builds trust and eventually, Madeline stops fighting. Her cruel words don't work anymore because Madeline knows what she wants, to finally find peace and accept Madeline as her reflection. This leaves Madeline no choice but to surrender, because she realizes how crucial it is to work in harmony. There was no real reason to ever be afraid of each other. Coping with stress is never easy and people rarely handle it the right way. Kelly McGonigal in her TED talk, How to Make Stress Your Friend, talks about the importance of looking at stress as a positive aspect rather than a negative one. Although Madeline struggled from self-esteem issues which created her anxiety and depression, 
In the end, she made the right choice of making Badalyn her friend. Badalyn created the stress that she had, and the only way to beat it was to embrace it. McGonagall did a study on 30,000 Americans and asked two questions. How much stress have you experienced in the past year? And do you believe that stress is bad for you? She found that 43% of Americans who experienced a lot of stress and believed that stress was bad for them died within eight years. Now in a typical stress response, your heart rate goes up and your blood vessels constrict like this. And this is one of the reasons that chronic stress is sometimes associated with cardiovascular disease. It's not really healthy to be in this state all the time. But in the study, when participants viewed their stress response as helpful, their blood vessels stayed relaxed like this. Their heart was still pounding, but this is a much healthier cardiovascular profile. It actually looks a lot like what happens in moments of joy and courage. This is just one of the many examples of how stress can be coped with. There are some other more reliable methods, although they can be pretty difficult to incorporate in your daily routine. These methods are most effective with excessive amounts of stress. First, there's problem-focused coping, which is when people try to eliminate the source of stress or reduce its impact through their own actions. This means trying to understand and identify stresses that are most dangerous alone and without guidance. This could mean going to receive guidance, but it has to be your choice to be problem-focused coping. Emotion-focused coping is a strategy that involves changing the way a person feels or reacts to a stressor. This could mean just generally talking to someone or seeing the problem as not a big a deal, which is what Kelly McGonigal was talking about. Although ignoring may seem like a bad idea, worrying about something excessively can be so much worse since it just impedes your life and could lead to cardiovascular diseases. Another more widely known method of coping is meditation. It is a series of mental exercises meant to refocus attention and achieve a trance-like state of consciousness. Brain waves change to alpha and delta waves, signifying deep relaxation. Doing it 20 minutes a day causes lower blood pressure, calms anxiety, helps get people more quality sleep, and helps people deal with stress. Instead of running away or trying to leave Madeline behind, Madeline supports her mirror image and uses her to complete the rest of the journey to the summit, meaning that now Madeline has two dashes instead of one. Madeline's personal arc could have easily ended with her purging her negative self from existence, but she instead decided to embrace her flaws and not let them define her any longer. Chapter 7 The Summit This is it the home stretch. This is where it all comes to an end. Take your final steps out of the reflection with both of your dashes and into the first part. The summit takes parts from each chapter and changes up the level design slightly due to the addition of an extra dash. The music from the chapter is taken as well and is slightly changed so that it fits the music of the summit. Badalyn uses an extra part of herself and takes the shape of this orb to propel you upwards. At 500 meters, we are reminded of a place where Madeline kept her mental disorder a secret. The stigma of revealing your true self prevents you from doing so, causing you to bottle up your emotions. Now though, you have a companion, and suddenly it doesn't feel hard or uncomfortable to reveal your true self. This is why having mental disorders can sometimes be essential for mental development. Being comfortable with yourself should always be the first step. You'll feel less lonely and your self-esteem will be boosted. Coping with stress then becomes so much easier. Next, at 1,000 meters, we are reminded of the old site, the birthplace of anxiety dreams. This is where we see Madeline finally reveal a darker part of her backstory. There was no balance in her life, and it constantly fell as though she was fighting herself. Now, at the summit, they're working together. Just imagine how much easier it would have been with two dashes in the beginning instead of one. It was crucial to establish peace, or else reaching the summit would have been pretty much impossible with just one dash. If anything, the old site helps Madeline and the player identify what the issue is, whether it be through dreams, symbols, or just your recurring images in your imagination. Along the journey you find a friend, but it isn't exactly the easiest thing to explain your issues. It just feels comforting to have someone around. At 1500 meters you are reminded of the effects of being lonely, 
for extended periods of time. You understand the side effects and the dangers. Being alone sometimes in life is a good thing. It lets you have me time, gives you a chance to relax and gives you a break from social life. Being lonely, however, is a feeling that is completely different. No one craves loneliness. It's something that completely changes your personality and can be pretty hard to come back from. Ashira has shown us that being immortal means that sacrifices must be made, like losing all your loved ones and of course, as a result, becoming lonely. At 2000 meters, you feel as though the wind can sometimes be against you, and sometimes it can be on your side, propelling you forward. Madeline experiences her first panic attack here, because of Madeline. We finally see, in person, how much imbalance really exists in her life. And we understood and analyzed that this holds true for many high school and college students in today's era. The pressure of success is so great that it causes mental disorders to wreak havoc on a person's state of mind. Then, at 2500 meters, you understand how much stress really exists in your life. Parents, college applications, external demands from clubs and programs that you signed up for, etc. However, you don't exactly know how to handle it. Your friends offer you to use drugs and alcohol, but you know it's not right. However, you need something. At 3,000 meters, you realize that you're almost there, 30, 29, and you realize that simply giving yourself time to relax and looking at the complexity of life like a gestaltist, meaning looking at things based as a whole rather than the sum of its parts is much easier, 28, 27. In the grand scheme of things, worries like these are meaningless, 26, 25. Stress and anxiety are essential for our development because they make us realize this, 24, 23. Simply taking time to meditate or relax is the most effective way, 22, when it comes to reorganizing your thoughts and grounding yourself, 21, 20. This climb may be tough. It may seem like incorporating effective coping mechanisms is easy until you actually try to do it yourself. Personally, I believe that it needs to become a commitment I know what high school is like. It's a mess. An absolute mess. You become overwhelmed with all these thoughts about the future, and at the same time lose focus when it comes to the present. High school should be a meaningful experience, which is why coping with stress is so important, so that it can be meaningful. Make peace with the voice inside your head that tells you that you aren't good enough, and only then you'll be able to reach the summit. Thank you. Thank you.